Hey everybody, today I'm looking at a licensed game based on the 1992 film of the same name. Is it as good as I remember, or is that just wishful thinking? Find out, as today I look at Disney's Aladdin. Aladdin was released for the Mega Drive and SNES in 1993. It has several difficulty levels with the hardest option reducing the number of projectile weapons and continues you start with. The game plays out very much like the film that it's based on. One moment we're a street rat on the streets of Agrabah, the next we're on a white knuckle magic carpet ride to escape a crumbling cave. The game has small cutscenes to add to the story, which are nice if a little slow. Each level simply requires you reaching the end after traversing through several enemies and obstacles. Every level captures a specific scene from the film, and the level progression feels very natural. The enemies seem logical as well, such as guards trying to take you down in the city. There are exceptions of course, such as skeletons that explode after getting their head mixed up with a bomb. Sadly, the skeletons are a bit cheap when it comes to shaving off your health. You can't attack them through walls, but their flying bones can easily pass through and hurt you. We have some other platform game offences too. We have the classic flying enemies in the form of bats. We have the odd leap of faith. Some unfair insta-death moments, but nothing compares to anything that involves the magic carpet. We first meet the magic carpet after stealing the lamp, just like in the film. However, unlike in the film where the carpet's a lovable character, in the game you'll grow to hate it. The first annoyance is the escape from the cave. It's reminiscent of the turbo tunnel level from Battletoads, but slightly more fair thankfully. You have the genie's hand guiding your escape from the cave. However, at the end you have three moments where you're presented with a question mark. You're pretty much screwed unless luck is on your side. And if not, then you've potentially wasted three lives just so you can have the exact path memorised. Not a huge deal, but it just feels like an easy way to pinch some lives from you. Then we have areas of the game where the magic carpet shows up to help you. On one of the later levels, you step on the carpet and you're launched into a 200 mile per hour turbulent flight all over the screen, swinging your sword as fast as you can in desperate hopes to hit an enemy and avoid damage. Again, another cheap way to shave off health. If you collect pretty much everything you see in the game, you should be fine though. You can collect jewels to trade into a dodgy dealer on each level in exchange for extra lives or wishes, which it just continues. You have a generous amount of checkpoints in most levels too. You have a chance of gaining extra goodies if you collect all of the genie's head items. They basically act as a ticket to play a slot machine game at the end of the level. There's also a chance to play mini games between levels as Abu, should you grab the Abu head item hidden in the level. The bonuses come with caveats of course, such as losing all your tickets on the slot machine should you land on Jafar's face, and the Abu levels can be quite difficult if you don't know exactly where hazards are going to appear. Aside from trying to gain extra lives should we die, what else does Aladdin have at his disposal? Apples. And a scimitar. The scimitar is good for close range, but honestly most of your offence is going to come from throwing apples at enemies. They're especially crucial in boss fights, as they give you the distance needed to avoid damage, and usually the bosses aren't harmed by your scimitar. I didn't know apples could deal so much damage. I suppose there could be candy apples, but it doesn't look like Agrabah is in the middle of Halloween season right now. Apples can not only stun and kill enemies, but the devs put in little touches if you time throwing your apple just right. Some enemies will slice your apples in half, or you can throw an enemy off guard by knocking their trousers down with a well placed throw. You also have some items that you'll stumble across every once in a while that will kill all the enemies on screen. Pretty handy, but sometimes it doesn't remove all of them. As far as the rest of the gameplay, it's okay. Average at best. There are some minor puzzles, although that's a stretch. And the platform game favourite? Disappearing platforms. You can traverse the levels by climbing ropes, jumping off flagpoles, and even collecting flutes to activate flying ropes. One of my biggest gripes is that it's often not clear where you're supposed to be going. The dungeon level is just a tedious maze to get through, and there is one moment in the genie level where it seems like there's nowhere to go, until some platforms magically appear. How was I supposed to know that? I'm 30 and impatient now, could you imagine how bad it would be playing this as a kid? 
I think that'd be a cheap death there, trying to see if you can jump to the next platform, only to fall to your death. Sometimes you have boss fights, which are usually ridiculously easy and quite similar to each other. Jump, throw apples, rinse, repeat. It's particularly annoying in the final boss fight though, as you're avoiding the boss so much you barely see the character himself. It kind of feels like it was pointless for the devs to animate Jafar if we're not even going to see him. The gameplay is pretty average, but it gets the job done. One of the main strengths of the game though, is the graphics. This is one of the best looking games for the Mega Drive that I've ever seen. It has beautifully recreated character models from the movie that look crystal clear. The animation is great and often funny and charming. Each level really has a different feel to it, despite the layout not being the best. I'll be glad to never play that dungeon level again. The moment that really stands out to me though is the genie level. I rewatched the Never Had a Friend scene from the film before playing, and I'm amazed at how many references the devs crammed into the level from that short scene alone. It also gains extra points for having a Mega Drive in the background of the level. Not only that, but the music is spot on. The music is great across the board. Whilst it may just be a straight copy of the film soundtrack, I have to say, this is still some of the best music that the Yamaha YM2612 sound chip has ever produced. It even beats out the SNES sound chip. Now I'll admit, I'm a Sega fanboy, and usually the SNES has a superior sound and graphics, but this isn't the case this time around. The Sega Mega Drive version absolutely trumps the SNES version. That's not to say the SNES version is bad. It's made by Capcom after all, but the music and graphics just don't compare. It's also worth noting that the SNES version is nearly a different game entirely. Sure, there are some similar story beats that match up with the film, but other than that it's its own thing. Instead of swinging a sword and throwing apples, your main method of taking out enemies is springing off their head. And throwing apples. We have different takes on scenes from the film, different levels entirely, and levels that are spread out over several worlds rather than being self-contained. There aren't as many cutscenes in the SNES version, but the ending screen is certainly much lengthier and more rewarding. Maybe if I ever do the A to Z of SNES, I'll take the liberty of showing you the end screen. Overall, the game has some flaws, but it has enough charm and polish in the right places that you can easily forgive it. Combine the game with the SNES version for the complete experience. They both do a great job of retelling the film, and immerse you in the world. If you have to go with one though, definitely go with the Mega Drive version. Thanks for watching today's episode, and as always I'll put the end screen at the end of the video. And if you like what you see and want to see more, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.